Hello and welcome to another classic episode of the Weekend Edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. Now, one of the concepts I've waited to do on this show for the longest time, ni hii yenye tunatakufanya leo. And it couldn't have come at a better time. Now, this past Monday was KDF Day. And KDF for Kenya Defense Forces. I have to clarify that because my just is a Squeeze you KDF, kuna watu wakili naenda kwa staple food ya kakitu deficiency forces. For real. Now, so, hii matufali watu wanakula kayole siyo mchezo. Jaribu kuigula kavu at your own risk. Now, that's not the KDF I mean. One of our guests for this episode is literally the first Kenyan to be enlisted in the Kenyan Special Forces. He started as a cadet in 2006 and retired as a paratrooper. See, the basic knowledge I have, paratroopers are the members of a, an airborne. They are members of an airborne unit of soldiers. Wakudondoka kwa ndege na maparachute. Ni kama makanga wa ndege. But elite, elite. Our guy is technically Chuck Norris in the flesh. Wasi wa DJF row umse ni commando na nusu. Awa ni seme danga manya. I say this because the unit he served in is in the same class or league uh, na Delta Force na zile uh, Navy Seals in the US. Byron Adera is in the house! Thank you. Thank you. Ashanti Sana. Uh, also in studio is a lady who has served as a psychologist in the army and was very instrumental in helping uh, and treating mental health challenges among the troops. Uh, she's the founder of True North. Retired Major Wairimo Mokoria is in the house! Yeah. I can tell you something. Before we get to that part of the show, first of all, we have to give it up to Eliud Kipchoge. What my Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was solid. That was solid. See, apart from Mizima stories are bangi, Zimeja kwa news, Mara O, police walichoma bangi za mamilioni ya pesa, Mara O, basi la kanisa limepatikana likisafirisha bangi. Apart from all that, courtesy of one Eliud Kipchoge, Kenya has never been this high on the world map. <laughs> For real. Yes. Never, 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 never. That, that, that was clean, that was clean. Congratulations are in order for the world champ. Eliud Kipchoge is the first human being in the world to run a marathon in under two hours. He finished uh, the 42 kilometer race in one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. In the remaining 20 seconds, he just two hours, uh, in no particular order, he used 10 seconds to greet the deputy president. He used seven <laughs> seconds for sign language uh, gratitude. Yeah. Yeah. For, yeah, for the remaining three seconds, he hugged his wife. <laughs> for yes. Mrs. Kipchoge had traveled to Au Au Austria, uh, in Vienna in Austria, to witness Kipchoge's shortest performance ever. <laughs> yes. And, uh, for it. yes. Yes. And, and haters, haters will say, at your 20 seconds, Kipchoge alibakisha. Your 20 seconds. Utili Brown angekuwa menda marathon zake mbini. Moto, moto. But that's, 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 don't, don't think about that, don't think about that. That's, that's besides the point. That's besides the point. Now, aside from the glory Kenya has received from the 159 challenge, we also have gotten to understand a word that has been taken for granted for so long. Peace set us. These were the guys who accompanied Kipchoge on the track. Ilikuwa kama mbogi yake, unajua? Kazi yao ilikuwa, uh, kazi yao actually ilikuwa, ni kupea mtu saik. Wakukimbize, wakukimbize, alafu kikaribia finish line, wakuwache we umalizie. As it turns out, this is not a new concept. We have peace set us in almost every aspect of life. In fact, here's a rare footage of the original peace set us. <laughs> the original pesetas. And come to think of it, this is actually what inspired how hawkers move ukiitisha njugu wala fugari yanze kusonga. Now that you meanza kuongelea stories a match, but it's interesting that hata ndani ya matatu squeeze kuna ma pesetas. Unaingia kwa gari, kama mmoja wa mwisho, unapata kumbe wewe ndiyo mmoja wa kwanza. For real. All the other people that you think are passengers, people are not bigger safety. When it was space setters. 
sometimes, sometimes, sometimes actually, sometimes people push besetting too far. We've had cases of besetting even in marriage. Akina Brayo na Kevo. Sorry. Akina Brayo na Kevo. Wala kukimbizia, ala kukikaribia finish line, ama ukipropose, wala kuwacha umalizie. Kuna ma pesetas wengine actually, kuskuma kwa marriage sana. Mbaka siku ya arusi ba. Be warned bro. Kuna watu wapendi yo mchezo ya pesetting kwa arusi zao. Haters wanasema yo ndio kituruto wamekuwa kifanyia baba tangu baba ingie jubili. <laughs> now, now talking of government by the way, one of the election promises was the creation of 1.3 million jobs every year. Well, the government has lived up to a fraction of that promise and this week one, mil one job actually, one job was created for three millionaires. <laughs> yes, Kenyans, uh, Kenyans however are not happy with how the positions have been awarded. Now, among other parastatal uh, appointments, Kenyans were most angry at the gazettement of uh, former Odaya MP Mary Wamboy's, Mary Wamboy as the chairperson of the Kenya Employment Authority. At the position she would have been awarded to the youth. Guys, it's the employment authority. It would be understandable if the complaints were because she had been appointed to chair a parastatal where Kenyan youth are mostly experienced. The Kenya Unemployment Authority. <laughs> <laughs> What do Kenyan youth know about employment? What do you know about employment? Now, I stumbled upon this clip said to be actual footage of a Chinese Special Forces soldier in training, and I've watched it several times since. <laughs> yes. Now, one of the comments on Twitter was that this is an officer set aside by the Chinese government to deal with us if we delay with the SGR payment. <laughs> For real. Now, my, my curiosity... My curiosity led me to search if there is any special forces training in Africa, and I found this exclusive footage. <laughs> there is a super select breed of men, a special breed of warriors, always ready to answer their nation's call, and who, who do not live their life just dreaming of the future they want, but live creating the future they want. Then what's up? Stop shaking in the village. <laughs> Now, I don't know what becomes, I don't know what becomes of that. But your party at Tembea for my topic, if that special forces training, then kill him to an issue of Kuru Kwanjenga and his special forces. Serious. Now, for, for parents that want to identify kids who could be in the military or in the army, here are some of the signs to look out for. <laughs> now, uh, what you've just seen, what you have just seen could also pass as an impression of how Kenyans vote in every general election. Now, this being uh, the week when Kenya Defense Forces were celebrated, uh, appreciated for the good work that they do, the subject of our show tonight is what it takes to be a soldier. I'm very well, I'm very well aware of what comes to mind, Ukisema soldier. But at least, <laughs> at least, at least, at least, at least, the role of a soldier, Ile Kazi, a soldier, which is to protect, is still ingrained deep in people's mind, as was evident in Red Sun's last hit. Soldier! Yeah. Soldier Kazi a soldier protect watu wakati wamevamiwa. Now people have different ideas of what it means to be a soldier actually, and there's a lot of mystery surrounding the concept of uh, military and defense, and that's why we brought pros to help us break it down. Ex Special Forces Officer Byron Adera and Major Retired Wairimo Mokoria uh, will be joining me on the other end of this short break to break this down even further. See you guys in a bit.
Welcome back to the weekend edition. I'm Dr. Kingori. Like I said, we have a classic show lined up for you. Let's not talk you. What does it take to make a soldier? Alafu, on the show, we are honored to have the first female uh, psychologist to be enlisted in history. The first female psychologist in history to be employed by the KDF. And we also have the first Kenyan ever to be enlisted in the special forces. What makofia Byron Adera and Awairimo Mukuria. You've been in the military, you've served, hey, you've gone very many fasts. Uh, yes. I love who, uh, you're also a psychologist. Yes. I have a stereotype about psychologists. Tell me. Ukini Angalevi, what am I thinking? <laughs> I don't read thoughts, but I, I, it's a stereotype that is common with a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Byron, We're special yes. forces. You told me that you are a very, very small community. Yes, the special forces is the smallest community within any army setup. Because yeah. to the convert, smallest community. it's the smallest community. You know, the, the few, the chosen, the bravest and they're the deadliest warriors on earth. Oh, kwa hivyo kuna 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 pia cowards mali hata. See that they they're not cowards uh, such. <laughs> but ideally these are the chosen few. Okay. Uh, so in terms of the progression yes. um, uh, those are the deadliest you have in any in any military advancement uh, and and the people also get to differentiate themselves in terms of uh, if there's a courageometer, so in terms of courage, yes, yes, yes. There must uh, be. mental toughness, um, high adaptability, physical and mental, you know, um, uh, toughness. So it's all those things. So talk about the top one percent of uh, the guys that you see in, in uniform. Then you'd get probably the raw material to make a special forces operator. Yes. Like you, Wairimo, you've yes. been to the battlefield. You've right. gone to war, right? You are a psychologist. Mm -hmm. Nani alikuwa na kudikompress wewe? <coughs> it's a good question. <laughs> oh, there's another meaning. Ah, well, I can't Yes. Let me go. Let me go. I could tolerate stress. I had very good people standing in that space for me because okay. it's very, very necessary. But of course, um, my struggle is like. A real struggle because there are things. Because in psychology, if you're a psychologist, lazima ukue na iyo clinical supervision. Okay. But you see, for me, it was a bit tricky because who do I go and tell what I should not even be talking about? Okay. That is eating into my heart and into my soul and making me like it might compromise my ability to actually deliver my services. So it's a, it was a very tricky situation, but um, made it through somehow. Ah. <clears throat> so there has to be, of course, somebody to be able to provide me with that clinical supervision. Uh, Byron, yes. Uh, as a trained soldier, the level of your training, your mm -hmm. top notch, since you come and your cream de la cream, right? Uh, <laughs> you, as in, I, I imagine you correct me if I'm wrong. Training yako unambiwangwa like wewe sasa mali umefika uneza nyorosha adiriba yote. There is a limit of people, if you beat below those people, at the Tatikana, Umepigana Nawa to eighteen Pekeake, you will be arrested. Is that true? Um there are guidelines for proportionality. And then there's proportionality. The and amount of people you can uh, beat up. Some of this is built on myths, you know. Some of this is built on myths and people's imagination. As they said correctly, yes. imagination is more important than knowledge, right? So here's the knowledge now. Okay. Imagination is very important, it will serve. But the knowledge is uh, comparatively a special forces operator is built to operate well beyond the capability of a conventional soldier. So yes. you can start the conversation from there. Okay. So a conventional soldier already goes through very arduous training. Yes. It's the toughest. I mean, you are going through cadet training, and you don't, you can't check yourself out, and you think you're going to make it through the next minute or second, you know. And we went for uh, training for 22 months in that college, perhaps the most, the longest thing I've ever done. 22 months. Yes. Uh, and every day is hell on earth. Every day is hell on earth. Now. Beyond that, then you answer to the call to, let's say, the parachute regiment, which is now, those were the uh, 
Uh, they, they, they could rather comically call it Beirut, the home of the brave in Gilgil, Kenyatta Barracks. Yes. Nice place. So that, that was my home for quite some time. And then from the parachute regiment guys now who are uh, revered across the army spectrum, then you get the super soldiers again now, special forces. So you can start to imagine the level of training this takes a human being to and the limits and beyond. Uh, really proud of Eliud and, 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 you know, the unsung heroes are, you know, the people that walk around. Uh, this had to be the same everybody. Now, uh, talking about uh, beating an entire uh, estate, entire Sati estate, River, yes. uh, that's neither here nor there because uh, I, I love to look at yeah, it from a different yeah, perspective. Special forces guy living there. Uh, uh, <laughs> just, I mean, rarely would you find, rarely would you find guys like me getting engaged in small-time brawls. Right. Uh, we probably <laughs> the wait, wait. Yes. Plan to go soldiers. We are going to make a police hit. Police, just you would. I wish you would. We are going to hit. So, if you are police, we are going to shoot you for practice. We are going to shoot you for this. I don't know. I found the Akuja. We need new ones. Alafu, 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 we are going to go to Kose. Back up, back up, Akuja, so that we can teach them a lesson again. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, we are in this together. Mm. Uh, we are in this together. It's the police true. are serving an important it's vision and, and mission yeah. in this country. Yeah. Yeah. And their brothers. I mean, I've operated yeah. with several policemen who are doing an, uh, an extremely good job. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from the, the very sad news about the rest who are ensconced in their own world, thrilling yes. away, not needing to be orientating themselves to the business at hand, that is sad. Because for you to have gone through a very elitist training and, and you are disciplined force with uniform, in uniform, yes. you got to be totally orientated towards your vision. Now, that aside, uh, the training that I know of, and I'll talk about the good things, the good side of things, best practices. Yes. Uh, you don't <coughs> want to get into a brawl with guys, guys that you call friendly forces, you know, for yes. obvious okay. reasons, yeah. okay? Blue. And these, that's blue on blue. Actually, the training uh, talks about it very profoundly. There's no one who fights, even in training. Actually, you, all of you lose your jobs. Yeah. If, if you you're found, fight. yes, mm. within the army, yeah. you know, in training, in service, if you fight and it gets known by anybody else, you, both of you would lose your jobs. Because so you graduate without knowing actually uh, whether you can beat up Actually, the same <laughs> army, uh, the, the thing is, the same army encourages <laughs> internal, like, tests. I, I, I mean, look, uh, there's, there's boxing day. It's part of the selection process in cadet. There is. Ah, you guys okay. fight. And it serves a given char character development purpose. Yeah. Same thing, there's a boxing day in the parachute regiment for the hopefuls that want to join the parachute regiment. So there's a boxing day on the fourth, fifth day of, of that hell week. You know, it's six days of hell pushing Land Rovers through six un, kilometers. And un all un that story. Story. Pushing Great. Land Rovers through six kilometers. What were pro box wakishi on a mafuta apa? They push it up here for a thicker room. I know. But, eh, but you will tell us about the hell week. I was very, I've been, I'm curious about that, Sana. But what's training like for a lady in the military? Mm -hmm. Well, um, my own experience, first of all, yes. I went with a backpack and a track suit. And then I used to have dreadlocks. Oh. Then I cut them. You were humbled. No, no, no. <laughs> I wanted this. Like, I really, really, like, you know, I was like, what does it take? And I watched G.I. Joe. And I'm like, oh, you were so inspired to join the military? No, 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 no. I wasn't actually inspired. For okay. me, it was just a question of, what do these people actually do? Do they have a psychologist? Now, if I went there as a psychologist, I would clear the bush. Oh, this is nice. I mean, I okay. think for the longest time in my life, I'm a bush clearer. Okay. I am a pioneer in many things. So this was just me being true to myself. Um, so I, I show up and uh, other people show up and they have big bags and they have like weaves and long hair. And so the first thing you get in, you go through Kinozi. And I okay. thank Sweet. God for that. Yeah, yeah. And so you have a weave. It was my first time to see a weave. Mutu wa kinyolewa wa kiwa weave. Ah. See, weave, weave. <laughs> it was phenomenal. I'd na, never seen ina, anything like that. Na ina kwa kautungu wata ikibegwa na upepo. Sasa hii na tolo ya weave. I don't know, I don't okay. know, but that's what happened. Um, so my own experience of it is I was ready for it. It was very difficult, you know. Like the press-ups, the... Forget the press-ups, man. First of all, you don't sleep, you know. And 
you do such ridiculous things. You have just, you know, one thing that you have to wear, it has to be clean. You know, then you meet these people, they tell you, I don't care what your level of education is. Yo, my son, a kit bag. You're like, what the hell is a kit bag? Oh, yeah. <laughs> then you go there, you meet somebody else, and then they tell you, uh, kwa amra. You're like, what's an amra? Amari. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a whole new language. Someone is there, you can't be silly. And we all look up. He means a sling. I mean, it was... Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I remember the first time, you know, um, you know, we were, we were being humbled. And everyone couldn't seem to understand what this guy was saying. And we were all looking at each other like, what is he saying? And then he's like, I remember one of them came to me and said, Ati, na wewe, poking me. Ati, ati psychologist. Ju, lisikia jeshi, watu wa na kitwa. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, are you for real? You know, so it was a very interesting experience. I personally loved it because I thought I was fit until I could not even squat. And it was every day, every night, every day, every night. Do you get excused? Do you get excused? At what? Now, that's the thing. And then you learn over time. You're going to slack. Probably they won't even bother with you. But everybody else will have to do a little bit extra. And so everybody else is like, what? You better pull up your socks, eh? We cannot be casualties of your lethargy. And so everybody has to come to that, you know, to that level. And what happens to the body? I didn't get my periods for the whole duration of training, which was fantastic. 22 months. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> one thing we should get clear so I was recruited as a specialist officer yes. he was recruited as a general service officer okay so they are different yes so yes. for me I was employed for my trade yes yes, yes. so he um, he was employed to be able to do uh, whatever duties are assigned generally although okay. at the end of the day I came to realize as long as you're in uniform you are a general you're service a, officer you are a soldier because I've been an adjutant I've been I've, I've been in different units I've done different things I mean, so at the end of the day, as long as you have the uniform, you'll do the work. So yeah, I didn't get my periods. Of course, they, we used to go get the hair cut because who has time for that? And it's just by providence. Can you imagine training? Every day you're in mud. <laughs> Every single day you're wielding through mud and mark, and I don't know what else that but is. But someone will say women have very good experience being mad. <laughs> <laughs> I literally don't have a comeback. No, I withdrew. I, withdrew. <laughs> I literally I withdrew. don't have a comeback. I withdrew. So what, no, but, but you're, every, you're Shinda in mud, but you're supposed to be always clean. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the irony. Yes. And so what that does is that, you know, it creates in you that adaptability. You know, you wake up in the morning, you're like, why am I putting logs in between my thighs? Why am I running? And then you come to realize... Logs in between your thighs. <laughs> and you race. And you race. And, 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 and a time <laughs> And a time comes and you realize there's no point in asking these questions. It's like, I think the whole point of it is to take questions away from you. Ah. To take questions away from you. Because, you know, before you were like, why are we doing this? What's the value of this? How is this going to make me a soldier? So over time, first of all, you're so tired. Kwanza, if you ask a question, it's like... Eh, hey, police station. Kuba is the same thing because that was so like, 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 Why did we learn about the Kabirondo brothers? I know. <laughs> <laughs> same concept. Same, same concept. concept. Yeah, but I think I, I, I would. I, I mean, I enjoyed myself immensely. But uh, not because during the training. No, after, during the training. Succeeded. Oh no, 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 no. You see, it took me about like, like a week and a half, two weeks, to just get to the program and go like whatever. And I started having so much fun with it. I'm like. What this? Give me more. Give it. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, it's and more I was logs, like, baby. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think, so by the time, and what I realized was that that idea of being able to push beyond the limit. Yes. As in, you have done this long walk the whole day. Man, you have your full kit, you have your weapon, you walk, you walk, you walk, you walk, you walk, you walk. And then you're like, this is your grid, you have arrived, welcome. And you're like, oh, thank you, can I have some tea, can I have somewhere to sleep? Uh, so you have to actually set up your own place to sleep. Bye, and people go. Okay, <laughs> by the way, yes. what's the most difficult thing for your training? And please tell us about Hell Week. <clears throat> wow, uh, the most difficult thing in the training yes. has got to be... Uh, the psychological warfare that you go to wage internally to just keep going. Okay. Because as she has said, 
the training gets you to beyond what your physical being can accommodate and, and withstand. Uh, mm -hmm. she's, talked of, she, she's talked about both uh, sleeplessness, man. You, do, you don't sleep. Uh, for the first three months of basic cadet training, sleep is not in the program. You know, I, we used to wonder, you know, my uncle used to be in the army and he'd talk about, you know, you'd be bullying your boots and you were thinking, bullying our boots? What does that mean? So you sat there and shining your boot for the longest, man, and there's an instructor. I think there's, there's something that's... Shining the, boots. Yes, uh, and the instructors are swarming. They, they're all over the place. They are on you like white on rice. So you'd be doing this for the longest. The clothes that you wore during the day with all the mug and mud and you did some steeple chase, not the normal one you see with the athletes and the marathoners. So it's all in mud. That is what you attend selection, I mean, um, inspection with, bedside inspection. So everything has got to be replete, done well, Ngui may pick up a in a particular, it's no, called full kit. It'll talk on my tope. So you guys have got to find a way of ironing them. So you got, it trains a lot of order. So the perfect, um, the perfect, what do you call it, uh, you know, irony here is there's a lot of disorder that's thrown at you. Mm. You know, the instructor all over you the, the entire day. Man, lunch, you, you are flagged off to go have lunch and, and the meals could be tasting as worse as army cooked socks. Mm -hmm. But it's the, wow. it's the most sumptuous meal on earth. It's the most delicious and boiro, you don't have boiro. time for it. Oh. Socks boiro. Yeah, it, it, could, it could as well taste like socks boiro, as she said. <laughs> but it's the most delicious because you are, I mean, you are constantly on a seriously physically demanding exercise or exercises for that matter. So by the time you are flagged to go have lunch for the 20, 30 minutes, the next guys in the next program are looking at you like you just burnt down a military camp. Like, cadet, what and I How now? You know, and so it's crazy. And you'll be eating while you're on, on the run to the next program. Yeah. Man, I, many times I hit, you know, a chunk of meat <laughs> in my pants. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> As you are running to the next program. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. 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 <laughs> yes. Did you eat the meat? Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> what do you mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Yes, Kuko. and you are, and you are, and it's, there's no comfort here. You are, you are on the run, you know, you're on the run, and the weapon is in your hands. You, you know, the G3 and it's heavy, it's heavy as well. Mm. Yes. And you're supposed to carry it, it's called high pot, so it's uh, over here. And you're running, you know, it's high, high knees to the next mm. program, and you're calling out, calling out like, left, oh, no. right, left, right. And it's, you know, the instructor demands maximum voice. What's our name, Kuko? So you come to decibels. <laughs> it's crazy. So you are doing this for six, actually no six, you wake up for morning run. We used to do the morning runs from 5, from 40, five. Zero, zero, 4, 45. Mm, yes. So in the dark. And trust and, me. Yeah. And nobody will fall, nobody will Trust die. me, everyone is, is yeah. suffer, suffering sleep. Is this sleeping sickness? Deprivation. Do you know deprivation? Yeah. So we used to sleep while standing for inspection at running. the assembly, uh, while on the morning run yeah. running. I mean, you sleep while running. Yes. One of us was on my instructors, Bele. I don't know where you know, I don't know where they're going. Mm -hmm. Guys, negotiate a corner and you're in the bush, you know, the entire. <laughs> <laughs> this might sound like it's mythical, but it happens. It's fact. Fact. You're all undergoing the same training, but it's impacting on all of you very individually. Yes. So my story is not his story, depending on what my attitude is, you know, and what my resilience is. And so when even people right now ask me, how is trading? I'll say to them, you just have to go and have your own personal experience in it. Because no matter what I tell you, it will never it will amount it, to yes. what the experience is. Because okay. it's so much of lived inside with what is happening outside. And okay. you know, so for me, I think what I loved about it is that I, I, you know, I knew I was physically fit. But what was so amazing to me is that I came to realize how far my mind would go. That was a shocker, and I loved it. And uh, when you talk about you are physically fit, uh, as in you are into fitness, yes. like gym, I'm yeah, just man. twerking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, throughout. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? Upu <laughs> <laughs> words have different meanings. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. You are as in gym, a gym person, Nini. You... So throughout, so I went to USAE for my undergrad and my graduate school, and yeah, me and Nili to a gym, so I knew I was, you know, I was good. Understand. But I'm telling you, when I left, first of all, okay, I wish I had a car photo. I remember uh, after pass some out photos. and we I came to Nairobi. You, but, no. you, but the the job. Yeah. But now, now this one, where now we came um, during training, there's a photo I took. 
And I, I looked like I was like 15 or 14. And immediately we passed out and we came to Nairobi. I remember I went out and I'm trying to go in and this bouncer stands in my way. You know, and I'm still like that fresh, you know, fresh out of Uku cadet school. Moto. You know? And I'm like, and I'm like, dude, like, are you trying to bring it to me or whom to a dream in nani? Like what? Like, so I was like, it was very interesting because. What? <laughs> uh, Maliza. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> the guy literally made me take out my ID. He literally, he was like, you're underage. And I was like, I'm really flattered, but get out of my way. And he's like, <laughs> your ID. So I give him my military ID. Oh, madam, pole, pole. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you see happy ending, Sidio? That's wait, not wait. what we expected. You expect that what? That was your moment to shine. I did. <laughs> <laughs> You I was supposed to chapa him or something. Uh, <laughs> hey, I was supposed bouncer. to. Uh, bouncer. Byron, what would be have, have been a happy ending? Um, he they... becomes my boyfriend. No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. No, but he hasn't done anything to deserve it. He's doing his job. And I think this is what we need to realize also, even with policemen and the military and everybody else who is in armed security forces. It's not personal. People are doing their jobs. So when you look at it like that, then you obey. And then you don't have drama. But now me, I'm like, you guy, Kwani, you don't know. Me, I'm in the military. I'm in the army. I move out of... Now, why? The guy is doing his job. Okay. You see, in fact, it's more respectful and professional of me to actually respect his hustle. How do you feel? Thank you. Thank you. Byron, as a special forces, umetulia. Kwa kichaka. I love you. Al Shabab and a pitapo belly, a lafuski and yoka king. What do you do? You eat the snake. Ah, you, you are holding the gun like this. A lafu miski iki, iki login. <laughs> what do you do? Oh this God. has happened real time and in real life and in all really? not once, severally, severally. I mean, I've been in the theatres where we set up. The theatres as in theatre ni? Uh, yeah, theater you are different war. from your theatre, the theatre of oh, war. It's not sterilised. So it's not, yes, it's, yes. It's, not, it's not a joke here and it's no play, it's no training anymore. Yes. You know, you guys have been inserted, like getting, gotten into some battle space. Yes, yes, yes. And you're going to do business, okay? Yes. And uh, what you call battlefield discipline would demand that some of you do some things. I mean, no one would smoke, no one would, I yeah. mean, to some extent, guys would carry piss bottles, so you pee in the bottles, it's packed away in your bag, some other kind of operation will be organized for them to take trash away, resupply you with fresh ones. Pambana na haliyako. Pambana na haliyako. So, that, I mean, if someone were to trace you guys and they found a human paste, there's a way you'd know a human paste here and that's not an animal. Yes. There's a way I'd know that's a fecal matter of a human being, so you pack all that in and Una it goes, na, yeah. trust me. <laughs> that happened. So let's assume you now set up and you could push your luck a bit too far. The enemy set up some camp, intelligence is needed. Part of our, most of special forces jobs are intelligence driven. So you're right next to an enemy camp and you set up call close target reconnaissance. installments Absolutely. So you cannot afford to screw up this operation just because <coughs> some snake yeah. uh, has gotten in someone's clothes. Not so important. Come, oh. you know, uh, calm the uh, temperatures down and just get done with the business at hand. Okay. Uh, there's a lot that you can always get away with, uh, trust me. Uh, sometimes the snake is just in his own business. It's true. It's, your cause, it's yeah. on its way. Uh, what can kill you will always build a bridge to a stronger destination and a better one. Ah, really? Yes. I'm surprised to learn some of the things soldiers carry in those bags. <laughs> <laughs> the more you know. Uh, Sasa, uh, as a psychologist, right? Um, uh, Akina Byron, uh, I've gone to the battlefield there, Nini, as in Byron, I'm a serve, I'm a talker, yeah. right? Uh, he now, he was trained to be a soldier, right? A super soldier for that matter. How do you help him adjust now uh, with the former Byron, the normal person like me now? Like who? <laughs> <laughs> like you. He can't? Isn't that like downgrading? Okay, normal person. <laughs> <laughs> I got 
Yeah. Show back. I'm sorry. I had to. Oh, oh you all yes. this time you were preparing a camera. No, it was not. I saw it. I saw a window. I took it. it took you long enough, but yes, uh -huh. indeed. It was sweet though. So, yes. um, I think the most important thing to understand, and I know I meant it as a joke, yes. but it is actually facts. Once you like undergo basic military training and you do your service, if you become a combatant and you leave the service you don't go back to where you are from. You will never be the person you were before you went through those gates, right? Yes. So, you, you know, and that's why there's that term of military veteran. And there's a whole misconception, and I hear it even with people in uniform, and they say that now you, you're going to become a civilian. There is no reverse basic training. There is no reverse conversion. You know, because what is so special about basic military training and service is that it fundamentally changes you, you know, structurally, functionally, psychologically, spiritually, mentally, cognitively, you know, you literally, they, they build you up in their image, you know, so there is no going back. <clears throat> and that's where, you know, True North is coming in, because there is such a difficulty for, you know, soldiers when they leave to be able to just transition and to reintegrate and um, I think I have been my best guinea pig because I documented everything about my process and I really was very honest about what I was going through what I was thinking what I was feeling and I can tell you it took me probably about six to eight months okay. to like reorient myself and remember I am a psychologist I have people standing with me I understand what's going on I have the insight you know but it still was a problem for me. So for a lot of people, that readjustment, that reorientation is not successful because they don't have the tools. But most importantly, they don't have the assistance. But even worse than that, they are not even present. You know, I have been very open about uh, my recovery from uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And I would say that is like the number one thing that, you know, was very difficult for me. And I knew that's what it was because of my profession. But there are People going through it, they don't know that actually they are, they are suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. So transition and reintegration becomes even more difficult. And when you look at it from like a larger frame, which is our country, we deal with what hurts us by suppressing it, compressing it, or denying it. And that's why we drink, that's why we smoke weed, that's why we have excess sex, we overeat, we undereat, we don't sleep, we chew so because we want to numb. We want to numb what we are feeling that we are uncomfortable with. But that's, that doesn't help. Of course it doesn't. All it does is suppress and, and actually postpone <laughs> or delay the inevitable. <laughs> which is, yes, which is an utter and complete breakdown. Like, part of recovery, you have to break down. And people are afraid of breaking down because they are afraid it means losing control. What people don't realize, actually, is that you lost control a long time ago. You're actually not in control. You're a slave to your condition and the negative coping that you have adapted to help you to cope. So really, you're not even free. So that's basically what um, the transitional process and the help with the reintegration comes. There's a res res residential program, and then there's an outpatient program. To, I think just first of all, to, go to, 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 have, to bring the person to that point of, yes, this happened to me. Yes, this is me. Um, I accept, I own it and then set a new course, a new trajectory, and that's true north. And just realign yourself back to direction north. As we close, yes. uh, you've left the military now? No. Absolutely, yes. But they can call you when? Not at all, not in the current setup. You, you. Um, yes, There's no reserve. I'm done, I'm done yeah, we don't with, have a reserve. Uh, we don't have a, an active reserve. Yeah. Uh, the guys we trained with in the UK, or the forces uh, across the globe, some have very, very active reserve forces that can be called upon to yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. get back to doing active but business. You know, you've done your part. Uh, right? Yes, I've done my part. Really happy with it. Okay. Ask him whether he would go back. That's where I'm going next. I love the army with my, all my heart. I did. I mean, I'm, I'm a very passionate guy. And, and uh, I mean, if there was anything beyond the special forces that had gone for it, okay. sadly there was no other hill to climb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sawa, sawa. E conversation, Aki, I believe, in a Zendelea Mpaka Kesho. Uh, but now, Aki and I, I don't know. I feel bad that we have to come to a close now and there's so much we have not even discussed. I sat with Byron, we actually met by coincidence when we met 
Now I was like, hey, we have to do a show Very in the important. military. Yeah. Thank you both for honoring the invite. Asante Nisana, Wapi Makopia. Asante Nisana. I also, I also have to give a shout to uh, Major Mwithi, uh, retired Me Major Mwithi. Uh, we have been planning to have a show with him na one of these fine days to come to begin a story. Ata yako na story zake interesting. But otherwise, I'm very, very happy uh, to Mejibamba na hii episode. I feel like I've just watched a Chuck Norris movie, so mtu wa sijaribu imani yangu sai. Don't try my faith. Then Byron is my friend, so be careful. <laughs> Tuweza delea kupigia story uh, on Nation FM uh, every every weekday, uh, Monday all through to Friday from 6 to 10 a.m. in it was the morning fix with myself and Kate Rida. But otherwise, uh, next week on the uh, on on NTV, same time, same place, notification gang, na kila mtu pale YouTube, uh, same time, same place. Otherwise, that's it for the weekend edition. See you next week. My name is Dr. King Olin. <laughs>